Hello students, it's Professor Lorenzo, and in preparation for your next essay assignment, we're going to talk about the descriptive essay. As a basic definition, a descriptive essay describes something uh, to make readers feel, smell, uh, see, taste, or hear what is described. For a broader definition, a more detailed one, we look to Purdue Al, who says, uh, a descript the descriptive essay is a genre of essay that asks a student to describe something object, person, place, experience, emotion, situation, etc. This genre encourages the student's ability to create a written account of a particular experience. What is more, this genre allows for a great deal of artistic freedom, the goal of which is to paint an image that is vivid and moving in the mind of the reader. So here are some guidelines uh, on writing descriptive essays. Number one, say if uh, I ask you to describe your favorite food, uh, then you jot down some ideas before you begin des describing it. For instance, if you choose pizza, you might start by writing down a few words, sauce, cheese, crust, pepperoni, sauce, or spices, hot, me melted, etc. Once you've written down some words, you can begin by compiling this descriptive list for each one. Um, of course, as in any essay, you're going to use clear and concise language. The next is you're going to use vivid language, um, which of course is a figurative language, which we'll talk about a little bit. Then you also you'll use your senses, and you think about your senses. Your senses, of course, is a sense of smell. Or the sense of touch, the sense of hearing, taste, and so on. The ideal is to uh, really emphasize your senses in what you're describing and also emphasize uh, the figurative language. You want to talk about what you're thinking instead of just exactly what you're seeing, you want to talk about what you're thinking and you want to describe your emotions uh, about that. You uh, but you want to leave the reader with a clear impression and of course as always in essays you want to be organized of course the best way to organize as we know is to use an outline and you will be required to do an outline with this essay so again uh, when we're when we're writing a descriptive essay we want to make sure we concentrate on sight touch taste smell hearing all of our senses and we also want to use figurative language you know personification, metaphors, similes are all types of figurative language that we've talked about in class so you guys are well aware of them but there's other types of figurative language also listed right here on this on this uh, screen so obviously if you wanna you know use some of those uh, in your essay you wanna go back and, and, and find out what they are and a little later on in this uh, presentation I'll give you a, uh, a website to take a look at that will help you with that Remember that a metaphor refers to a meaning or identity ascribed to one subject by, one, by way of another. Example, Henry was a lion on the battlefield. This sentence suggests that Henry fought so valiantly and bravely that he embodied all the personality traits we attribute to the ferocious animal, the lion. Similes, remember, are marked by the use of the words as or such as or like. Example, he is like a mouse in front of the teacher. And personification refers to the practice of a attaching human traits and characteristics with uh, inanimate objects, phenomena, and animals. Example, the raging winds, the wise owl, the warm and comforting fire. With the descriptive essay, you want to be sure to show, don't tell. Now, that's a complicated concept, uh, which requires a lot of concentration on your part when you're writing it. But as an example, we'll look at passage A here. My mornings are crazy. I am rushing all the time. Sometimes I miss my bus and arrive late to school. That's an example of showing. You're just basically telling what happened. But when we write essays, descriptive essays, or, or, or even uh, short stories, uh, we want to be a little bit more detailed. We want to make people feel what we felt that morning. So if you take a look at passage B, uh, it is an extended version of passage A. And as you can see, instead of you know, starting with my mornings are crazy, the writer says, I awaken to the annoying buzz of alarm clock at 6.30 a.m. So instead of just hearing that, the, that, the, that you know, it was a crazy morning, you're kind of getting a picture of, you know, the, the writer laying in bed, hearing the buzz of the alarm clock going off and not wanting to get up, especially when he looks over and sees it's 6.30 in the morning. Who wants to do that, right? So in essence, telling is just expanding on, uh, on a simple phrase. And making it a little, you know, just you know, a little bit more, putting a lot more feeling in it for the reader.
For instance, here's an excerpt from uh, one of my short stories called Perfect Limbo. Um, in the story, a young man um, has lost his 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 wife and, and son. We don't know if he lost them if they're dead. We don't really know if he lost them because um, uh, maybe he had a divorce or whatever. But whatever the case, I mean, he's lost his wife and son, and he um, um, he he's suffering from anxiety and depression because of it. So he goes to a psychologist, and the psychologist teaches him to hypnotize himself. And part of the hypnotism is for him to to imagine a room um, in his mind that would make him happy. In other words, if he was in that room, um, he uh, would be, you know, relaxed, free of anxiety and free of depression. And so this is a this, this is a, a, a paragraph in which he is talking about the room that he's uh, conjured up in his mind. Now, to, to, in order to, just, if we did this with just telling, we, we just say, well, I have a favorite room that I go to and it makes me feel better. But instead, we expand it a little bit by talking more about the room. So I'll read it out loud. Um, she counts down and when she's done, I open my eyes and the vision is more glorious than I imagined. At the bottom of the stairs on the opposite wall is a sliding door which leads to a balcony. The balcony is surrounded by an ornate black wrought iron railing. Beneath is a canyon and I peek out of the breathtaking waterfall on the other side. I can't hear the water because the door, door is closed, but I can see the mist dancing in the air. To the left of the stairway is a small fridge and bar with club glasses and a bottle of vodka on top. The wall behind the fridge is mirrored and it helps brighten the room. To the right of the sliding door is a cozy leather sofa with three king-sized throw pillows. The adjoining wall houses a huge marble fireplace with a stone mantel and mesmerizing fire. The rustic aroma of the burning cherry wood takes over my soul and levels my giddiness. Facing the sofa is a huge flat-screen television. The picture is so clear that I can see the faces of people in the stands enjoying the football game. So that's a little bit more pleasurable, a little bit more um, explanatory than just saying, hey, I got a great room that I go to and it makes me feel good when I'm there. So, here uh, at this website, if you like to go, you could find uh, some other types of uh, figurative language, some literary devices. It's really good to use. Uh, I use this website all the time. So, before you write your essay, or maybe even after, before you do the uh, uh, your assignment for the day, you may want to go there. Let's watch this short video uh, about descriptive essays. We beat descriptive essay, a la Schmuck. A descriptive essay is exactly what it sounds like. It's a piece of writing about a person, place, memory, situation, or cat that you can describe in detail. Let me tell you about Whisper. The process of reading your never-ending prose can be an agonizing experience for the reader if the descriptions are predictable. Make it stop. Just make her stop. For example, my cat is fluffy. He likes tuna. I love him very much. Still awake? This description tells the reader nothing new or special or memorable. There is nothing that differentiates this cat from the millions of other pet cats in the world. The key to a good description is to surprise the reader. No jumping out of closets for you. But you will need to get their attention by providing unique and memorable details. For example, My cat pirate has one eye and three legs. He gets into a lot of bar fights. He shows his affection by puking hairballs onto my sheet while I'm asleep. Arr, that isn't fine. Sometimes he grooms me by licking my arms with his rough leaving behind streaks of slimy saliva that smells strongly of rotten fish. <laughs> Give me a pound of your oldest fish. Okay, so this could still describe just about any cat in the world, with the exception of the one eye three legs book. But at least it's more descriptive. One of the key things to remember when you write your descriptions is that you need to engage your reader's five senses. Touch, taste, smell, sight, if they've got a sixth sense, try to engage them on that level, too. Maybe get some of the dead people to tell them. That's fish smoke people. Make your readers live your experience by filling in all the details they'll need in order to inhabit your memory. Besides, did I invite you? It's okay, there's plenty of room in there, and company's welcome. Pay close attention to your language. 
You don't want a line to sit dully on a page when a different word choice would really make a sentence pop. A popular way to liven up descriptions is to use similes and metaphors, or to compare one thing to another. Like apples and oranges, peas and carrots, anchovies and ice cream. No, use the sweet. Hey, don't judge. Maybe we just have a really sophisticated palate. Or we're pregnant. Mmm, spicy. This comparison can be made briefly within a particular description, or the thread of comparison can run throughout the entire paper, which is a great way to fit in your cardio exercise for today. So I cut this uh, video off early. There's about two minutes left. Um, you can go and view the entire movie in a static version of this lesson uh, that will be posted uh, along with this narrated version. So here's your assignment for today. You are to use this picture, okay, as the inspiration for your assignment. And what you want to do is uh, using at least two types of figurative language and two senses, you want to write a minimum one paragraph discussion post describing the picture. Uh, you can respond to your classmates posts, but it's not mandatory. The assignment is due by 1145 tonight. Again, this is the inspiration for your discussion. You're going to write a description on what you see here in this picture, and you're going to post it uh, in the canvas discussion now as I said you know it's not mandatory that you respond to um, your fellow students but it'd be great if you did it'd be great if you did to just you know tell them what you think about their description or add to their description or subtract from their description I'm sure you're gonna have a lot to say about this because well I think you see what I'm talking about so as always, it's uh, Professor Lorenzo signing out, and make sure you have a great day, make sure you learn a lot, and I'll see you in the classroom. Goodbye.